Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. Today, we are going to be talking about ego defenses. Now, this is going to be part one of two. So without further ado, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's dive deep into it. Let's get some background information going before we do that, though. Uh, we're going to talk about the id, ego, and super ego really quickly. You may remember this from you know a high school course or you know from college, but the id is a part of your brain or your conscious that deals with the intrinsic goals and desires of the heart. So this could be sex, this could be money, this could be drugs, but pretty much it's dealing with the desires of things that you may want. The superego deals with the morality and societal rules, okay? The superego is pretty much uh, the part of your brain that tells you, yes, this is right, no, this is wrong. And the superego, the way I like to remember this is I consider it a superhero. And because it's a superhero, uh, it's going to be very moral and it's going to follow societal rules. And therefore, it is a super, you know, superego. The id is, you know, in my mind, the antagonist to, or the nemesis of the superego. And then in between the id and the superego is the ego, which you know pretty much mediates between the id and superego. It does so so that we can achieve our goals that you know or achieve our desires that the id wants while still staying in a morally, legally and societally acceptable manner, making sure that we don't break the superego what the superego wants or what the id wants. Everyone is happy. And the ego does this pretty much by ego defenses. So what are ego defenses? Well, ego defenses are mental processes that could be conscious or unconscious that are used by our brain in order to resolve conflict and prevent undesirable feelings. It's kind of a coping mechanism built into our ego so that we can get through whatever we're going through in a way that it doesn't pretty much break us down. They're used often to fight off anxiety or depression, and it's a very common thing that you might see from time to time in your clinic, and you could be able to pick up on what's happening. So there are 20 total ego defenses that you should know, and there are 16 that are immature, and then four that are mature ego defenses. And I highly recommend you understand the four that are high, uh, the mature ego defenses because you know they often stand out. But either way, we're gonna be talking about the first 10. So we're gonna be going over the first 10 immature defenses in this video. In the next video, we're gonna be finishing up immature defenses and then we're gonna finish up mature defenses as well. So let's get started, let's just dive deep into it. The very first immature defense that we have is called acting out. Okay, and I got a perfect gift for this, and it's Sheldon right here, right? He gets really upset really quickly, so I thought that would be perfect for, uh, you know, acting out. Now, when someone is acting out, they're expressing unacceptable feelings or thoughts through their actions. So this could be someone who is throwing a temper tantrum because they're not getting the toy that they want. A kid might start crying because they want the toy, but because they can't get the toy and they're upset, they start acting out. They start crying, they start screaming, they start yelling at you. And that's a way that they, you know, uh, that they normalize the fact that they can't get what they want. And that is acting out. The second immature ego defense is denial. And this is one of my favorite gifts ever. Uh, it's Michael Scott yelling no when uh, Toby comes back. And he is clearly in denial when Toby comes back because he doesn't want that person to be in his life. Well, that immature defense is pretty much, you know, um, a way for him to avoid the awareness of some painful reality. Now, in the office, the painful reality is that one of his co-workers has returned. So he goes off and he doesn't believe that the co-worker is back. Another example of this is uh, a patient with cancer might plan a full-time work schedule even though he or she knows that they can't handle it. They're clearly in denial of the fact that they have cancer, but they don't want to let that affect them. So they pretend, you know, subconsciously or unconsciously that they are okay and they can handle everything. That's a way for them to uh, be in denial. The third ego defense is called displacement. And this is something I think you know, a lot of people may do. And I think a lot of medical schools do that too. It's a lot of times you start to uh, redirect your emotions and impulses into a normal person, someone who is neutral or into a, no into a neutral object. And again, I'm, I know a lot of you guys have done this, so I wanna give you guys two examples for this. Number one, let's say we have a teacher who got yelled at by the principal. Instead of the teacher then confronting the principal, the person who is actually making them upset, the teacher may go off on the students who are neutral to this whole situation, they have nothing to do with it. That teacher is displacing his or her emotions towards the principal onto the, um, a, onto the 
the students. Or in this example, I talked about uh, her husband, right? That's one way you could do it. Another example of displacement is pretty much uh, when sometimes I get upset about, you know, I'm being stressed out at, at school and I may go off with my wife. My wife has nothing to do with school, but because I'm stressed out from my school, I may be kind of short with her and kind of take it out on her by accident. By the way, uh, Fatima, my bad if you ever watch this. I don't mean to take it out on you, I'm just, you know, stressed out. Anyways, that's the perfect example of displacement and I guarantee you a lot of you guys who are pre-med or in medical school and have done this at one point in your career and you will probably do it as, it, as you move forward. The next ego defense is dissociation. And again, this is one of the immature ego defenses, but this is a temporary drastic change in personality, in the memory, in consciousness, or motor behavior in order to avoid stress. Now, this is often, it's often happens when it's a very emotional time um, and the patient has an incomplete, or maybe they may not even have uh, a memory of the, the emotional time of a traumatic event that happened to them. So the perfect example of this would be a rape victim. When a rape victim, you know, goes through all that, a lot of times in a clinical setting, they present in a dissociated state where they don't know what's really happening. Later on, they'll say, I don't know where I was. I don't know what happened. Everything was a blur. It felt like I wasn't even there. Um, just because their brain, their mind can't handle the, the fact that they got raped, so it actually dissociates, allowing that person to process what's happening without really shutting down their whole you know, mental capacity, their emotional capacity of what's happening. So that's a perfect example for dissociation. The fifth uh, uh, immature ego defense is fixation. <laughs> and, and, and this is the perfect uh, gift, in my opinion, with uh, uh, SpongeBob biting his nails. This is partially remaining at a more childish level of development. And I think this happens to a lot of us, right? Like when you end up getting, you know, um, uh, when, when an adult starts biting their nails, that could be them being fixated in an oral or biting stage, right? When they're growing up. So they haven't completely developed out of that childish level. They're fi they become fixated there. And I know I sometimes bite my nails, so maybe I'm <laughs> fixated on the biting, uh, on the oral stage of development. The next uh, immature ego defense is idealization and I know for a fact a lot of people do this man this is one of the most common things I hear especially nowadays this whole positive vibes dude only positive vibes and idealization is expressing pretty extremely positive thoughts and suppressing the negative thoughts that you may have and it's done so so that the negative thoughts don't overtake the positive things you have. A lot of people do this. This is probably one of the most common ego defenses in order to avoid stress, in order to avoid a, a difficult situation, simply because it's easy to, you know, uh, not think about the bad stuff and focus on the good. Now, the example I think was, yeah, the positive vibes, we already talked about this. All right, let's go to the next one. In identification, this is when a, a person or, um, it could be even be a child, but it, it's a largely unconscious assumption um, of the characteristics or qualities of an other person. You start to identify with another person or another group. So the perfect example I was that I was told about was a young boy identifying with a group of kids at his new school. It's a great way for him to fit in, right? The boy is gonna start to take on that group or that you know that group of people's habits, the way they talk, the way they act, in order for him to fit in. He's identifying with that group at the new school. So that's a, that is identification in a nutshell. Number eight, intellectualization. And I guarantee you, a lot of you guys definitely do this as well. Intellectualization is an immature ego defense where someone uses facts and logic to emotionally distance themselves from a, situa from a stressful situation. They may do that because they don't want to believe what's happening. So in order for them to cope with it, they start to intellectualize what's going on. They use facts and logic to prove to themselves that everything is going to be okay. The example for this would be, let's say you have someone who has cancer and you're telling a cancer patient that they have cancer. Well, that patient might start becoming fixated on the survival statistics instead of talking and dealing with the treatment and you know the, the disease itself. So that person is then intellectualizing the, f the problem that they have. 
right? The stressful situation being that they have cancer, but instead of them dealing with the disease and the treatment plan, they start focusing on the survival rates and statistics. Number nine, isolation of affect. In isolation of affect, you have someone that may separate their feelings from their ideas and events. So a lot of us do this, and especially in medical school, in the medical field, a lot of people do this simply because it's so jarring, it's so tedious, seeing, you know, a lot of emotional things happen that you start to isolate your affect. You have start to have an isolated affect. Um, and the perfect example, actually, in my opinion, is a medical student talking about cancer as if, you know, um, as if nothing is happening. It could be one of the most scariest diseases, let's say pancreatic cancer, which is a very low survival rate, but they're just talking about it like it's nothing. Uh, that means that that student is starting to separate his feelings from the idea or event. And then finally, for this video, we have passive aggressive. God, I know a lot of people do this. My wife actually does this. Um, this is an immature ego defense again, and it this is like the act of demonstrating hostile feelings in a non-confrontational way. You don't make it very clear to someone that you are upset with them, and, but you may do it through small gestures or some, you know, um, some hidden ways to kind of annoy the person. So you may show indirect opposition to the to the person who you are passively aggressive with. So the perfect example for this is when uh, my wife does when if I don't take out the trash. If I leave the trash in the trash can overnight or when she tells me to take it out and I forget, she becomes a little passive aggressive and she kind of, you know, gives me a little attitude and it's pretty much because I didn't do what she wanted. She's a little annoyed at the fact that I didn't take out the trash, so she makes, you know, life a little bit harder. So that pretty much sums up today's video. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to go on to Ego Defenses Part 2 to see the rest of the 20 Ego Defenses. We have 10 more coming up. And when you hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the, hit the bell notification as well so you can get notified every time we post a new video, folks. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys here right back real soon.